Hey guys, I know it's been a while, but uh, I just decided to make uh, one video because I just got a little bit of time to spare. And uh, I've been working on a small project here where I bought uh, a not working uh, scope from eBay, uh, basically next to nothing. Uh, I think the shipping was more <laughs> expensive than the actual uh, price of the scope. I have a uh, Tetronix here. It's working now. I have repaired it, but uh, uh, the scope is uh, it's Tetronix uh, 2235. It's uh, analog oscilloscope that has a bandwidth of 100 megahertz, and uh, so basically it was advertised as not having any trace whatsoever when uh, the power when the power is turned on. So I just decided to take a gamble and uh, you know buy it and see if I can bring it to life. And I actually managed to do so. Uh, yeah, so my thought was basically I bought it, uh, you know, to work on it, hopefully to to bring it back to life. And uh, worst come to worst, just use it for parts because I have a similar scope. Uh, it's I have a Tetronix 2232 that works perfect. Uh, that one is a digital scope, but uh, the analog part of the uh, that scope is exactly the same as the 33. Uh, uh, the uh, 2235 that's on the bench right now. So yeah, I just uh, decided to have a shot at repairing it and uh, yeah, and I finally managed to repair it. It's been a, a lot of uh, uh, troubleshooting and reading the manual and stuff and you know, but uh, all that hard work has paid off so it's finally working. So I'm just uh, making this video just to document the kind of steps that I took to uh, to repair the scope. Yeah, so basically first thing I'd, I've done was I just downloaded the manual from the internet. Uh, the scope has like such a great uh, manual that's available on the internet. Uh, uh, basically the uh, manual literally uh, tells you everything about the scope, the theory of operation of the circuit, uh, all the schematic diagrams, parts list, and uh, just detailed explanation of how everything is integrated in the scope just uh, unimaginable that you can find something very detailed documentation for uh, for scope these days so, uh, which is absolutely amazing but uh, yeah so uh, uh, once I bought it basically when it arrived I just uh, applied power and I didn't see anything on the on the screen but uh, when I pressed the um, as you can see the uh, the beam find button I instead of as you can see now where there's sweep uh, I just got a dot like basically just a dot not moving dot at all and uh, basically that gave me an idea that the CRT was good so it gave me an idea where to start troubleshooting basically and uh, I just started from there first thing I did was I just uh, measured the power supply rails for the for the scope and uh, basically uh, all the power rails are listed here i uh, just get you closer to here. As you can see, it says minus 8.6, plus 5, uh, plus 8.6. And then there's uh, 100 volts that's used for to drive the, uh, you know, the, 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 the uh, brightness, which is the, uh, the Z, uh, the Z uh, axis of the, basically the brightness of the uh, CRT. That 100 volts is used for that. And then there's a 30 volt you used also for, uh, used in somewhere in the circuit as well. So all these rails were perfect. I actually measured them and uh, like they were spot on. I didn't even have to make any adjustment. For example, this one is measuring uh, right now. As you can see, it's bang on. I haven't touched it. I haven't done any sort of a s adjustment. It was just like that. And as uh, I'm measuring it right here, as you can see, that's five volts. That's uh, a bit high, but uh, the uh, tolerance on that is from um, uh, 4.9 all the way to 5.4 so that's uh, within spec I think the minus 8.6 is the one that is very tight the tolerance is very tight it's only like a 10 millivolt above and below my 8.6 and this one is within so it's it's perfect and uh, there's a 8.6 one the positive 8.6 both the positive 8.6 and the minus 8.6 are used to bias all the uh, analog circuitry. 
so uh, their their tolerance is quite tight and as you can see uh, the scope is perfect and and i haven't touched it it just arrived like that and as you can see the 100 volt as well it's like bang on and there's the 30 volts yeah they were all like perfect so once i realized the power supply was good so i just started uh looking around looking for obvious signs if there was any uh parts that failed maybe there were like some uh, some, like some marks in the PCB see if there was any burnt marks or anything like that and I didn't find any so what I did was I just went ahead and uh, grabbed a signal from my function generator here and applied it to the uh, input of the scope and then basically start tracing it you know see where the actual fault is so I I traced everything uh, especially the vertical amplifier all the way until it it reaches the um, the uh, vertical deflection plates so if you see here on the scope on the uh, sorry on the um, schematic here as you can see there's a vertical right when it gets applied to the CRT so I traced it all the way from the input amplifier all the way to the final amplifier and all the way to here so the signal was up bringing here and and I went ahead because I did at, at first I only saw a dot on the screen of the CRT so I thought maybe the a sweep uh, oscillator wasn't working so and I went ahead and measured that too so and it was that that one was working too it was perfect it was like I could see the uh, soul tooth uh, waveform all the way to here which is where the uh, horizontal deflection uh, plates are so uh, that gave me an idea that there could only be one place where the fault should be and that would be right here so as you can see here there's this uh, the Z axis input here where it uh, basically uh, uh, blanks and unblanks the uh, CRT when it's sweeping like for example for the retrace and also until um, the signal arrives at both of these right you know at both the uh, horizontal and vertical to give it time to uh, rearm basically uh, so what I did was I started troubleshooting so I went ahead and looked if there was any uh, signal here on these two uh, pins input into the CRT and I didn't see anything so that was blank so I went back and traced it back 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 and then I went back further which is on the other side here they give you some uh, waveforms that you can see on these all these uh, marks here they're like test points they give you specific waveforms that look like uh, you know special waveforms and uh, I could see the waveforms here but then when it goes past this which basically comes into here I didn't see anything so um, like which is at the output here as you can see on this test point there's a special uh, signal that you're supposed to see and also at this collector side of this transistor you're supposed to see waveform number 48 which I can grab that so if we grab that waveform number 48 looks like this it's it's uh, it's a uh, some sort of uh, waveform where then the you know, amplitude of this waveform changes depending on the intensity of the A or the B the, uh, the B sweep and I didn't see this like it was completely dead so I suspected maybe it was these two transistors here they're used they're like I guess they're in a push-pull arrangement used to drive the blanking signals for the z-axis and I found out that this little diode here <laughs> which is uh, I think it's um, 1N4152 uh, it's like a 40 volt uh, breakdown uh, uh, I guess protection diode was gone like it was completely short circuited so I, I read 100 volts here on this side other side I also read 100 volts which basically turns off this transistor here because if there's 100 volts here there's 100 volts on this on the base of this transistor and then there's already 100 volts here so this base emitter gets turned off so this transistor is always in cutoff mode which means it's not properly operating so it's not like the basically it's uh, it's not working completely this circuit is basically dead so um and i just went ahead and removed this 
uh, diode and then just powered it again. I don't know why that would be the case. I don't know why this diode would die um, if there was any over voltage or something on the 100 volts rail, but considering none of the other, uh, considering it worked once I removed the uh, diode, you would think that, you know, it should have taken other other parts of the circuit as well but no it, it's just only this diode and for some reason it just failed maybe age or something like that but yeah so I removed it and I just took my chances and turned it on because I assumed it was a it was a protection diode so and I measured 100 volts here so I, I thought maybe it, it's okay to remove it. and then it worked it was actually perfect so I turned it off again and I just put uh, one end for 148 uh, just your typical switching diode there just in, until I get a replacement I have put an order to get that diode uh, it's quite old school diode so it's uh, hard to get but uh, yeah I've found a few on eBay very cheap so uh, I bought those and they're on the way so when they come I'll replace it but yeah it's back as you can see it's perfectly back now it's in uh, as you can see the B sweep and the A sweep are both working you can see I'm in intensified mode where I'm zooming in part of the uh, you can see I'm zooming in part of the circuit basically right there yeah so it's it's wonderful like to actually have a hundred megahertz scope working, <laughs> buying it next to nothing, and then uh, bringing it to life. And as you can see, I measured that waveform right from the uh, test point, and it just perfectly matches this waveform here. And then it basically varies the uh, amplitude depending on the uh, on the intensity of the A or the B uh, s sweep. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's working perfect. So I just thought maybe I could share this uh, sort of uh, little triumph with you guys. And uh, yeah, so I'm just uh, making this video to uh, encourage you guys just to take a shot and, you know, have a go if you can find score very cheap, not working equipment. You know, have a go as long as, you know, there's nothing that could wrong if it's cheap, you know. Worst come to worst is you learn something, right? So... Yeah, so and that's what happened to me, so basically. Yeah, just thought I'd share this with you. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll see you next time. Alright.